Hello ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to the Force Feed, the show where I keep you up to date on all recent gaming news and announcements. Today is Tuesday, December 6th, and let's just jump into today's gaming news. The 10th anniversary edition of Grand Theft Auto 3 will be made available on Android and iOS devices next week. This special edition of the game is seeing a transfer onto the portable platform. While this isn't anything new in terms of gameplay, it is exciting that they are going to be porting over these older quality games onto the portable platform. I am actually very much so looking forward to another playthrough of GTA 3. This raises the question when it comes to older games, is there anything in particular that you would like to see made on available on portable devices? I would love to see actually Halo Combat Evolved on the portable platform, as well as Metal Gear Solid. Those are two games that come to mind for me, but what games would you guys like to see on the portable platform? Speaking of Grand Theft Auto, an MMO made much in its vein, APB Reloaded All Points Bulletin will be seeing a relaunch today on Steam. While this is not up currently available as of this recording, sometime within the next 24 hours, APB Reloaded will be seeing an official relaunch. Now this game was launched last year and due to poor performance on Unfortunately, uh, their initial launch date, um, they actually got shut down. Now, they were repurchased and are seeing a relaunch today thanks to publisher Games First. Uh, the relaunch today of the game is going to be free to play. Now, some of the major high points of this particular game includes open world gang warfare PvP, high levels of character customization, and gameplay similar to Grand Theft Auto. I'm looking forward to actually trying out this game. I'll probably end up doing a video or two on it, although, again, it is an older game launched last year. Uh, it was shut down after a short period of time and now that the game is finally being made re-available I will definitely be taking a look so stay tuned in the future for more videos about this game. Final Fantasy XIV is no longer going to be free to play. They're going back to a subscription model coming up this January 6th. They initially went free to play because they were having issues maintaining a high subscriber base and to try to lure in more subscribers and more of a fan base, they switched to the free to play model. And it seems evidently that now that they feel they've got strong enough numbers, they're gonna be trying to switch back to the subscription base model. Now starting on January 6th, it's actually gonna be going at $6.99 a month for their subscription fee. This really is a little ridiculous, uh, the fact that they think they can actually make this switch, and I do wonder how many people who are currently playing the game are just going to stop playing as soon as they go to a subscription-based model. You see a lot of times these MMOs will get launched starting out with a sub, and then they go to free-to-play for one reason or another, generally because of poor performance, but to see someone attempt to go back to a subscription model, uh, this seems like it's probably not going to work out too well for them. Do any of you play Final Fantasy XIV, and will you still be playing once they gain back the subscription? fee. Let me know below. Major League Gaming has reported record numbers for the 2011 Pro Circuit. This is something near and dear to my heart being such a fan of StarCraft 2 and doing StarCraft 2 commentary as well. I'm very excited to see that the scene is growing and doing very well. Now they have reported numbers of 3.5 million unique viewers over the course of their Pro Circuit. Uh, that is pretty high numbers and they actually uh, reportedly stated that during their peak times they were seeing viewership greater than many major TV networks. This is a, a good thing for the esports community because higher viewership means more advertisers who are willing to pay for ad spots and that means more support for the esports scene in general. Higher revenue is always a great thing when you're trying to build something like a competitive community that we are trying to do in esports and the fact that it's doing so well is a really good thing in my eyes. Now you do have to keep in mind some of the mainstays here of course going to be uh, StarCraft 2 as well as Call of Duty so it does seem like Activision Blizzard is pushing a lot of the MLG tournament scene. Uh, it is a pretty interesting phenomenon and I'm happy to see it grow, uh, but what I'm really looking forward to seeing is other games get involved in the professional circuit as well, other games being incorporated into MLG. And that will lead us into today's question of the day, whether or not you follow pro gaming, is there any game that you would like to see adopted by Major League Gaming? Anything that you deem worthy of being played at a professional level? Do keep in mind that there are two key things when it comes to uh, the esports scene. When it comes to an esports game, it has to be, number one, a balance to a T. You cannot have an unbalanced game, it will just not work on the professional level. Players will not play an unbalanced game at a professional caliber. And then secondly, it has to be entertaining to watch. One of the main gripes against World of Warcraft when it was an MLG is that it wasn't too fun to watch. Matches became really long and drawn out and just not that entertaining. So to have a successful esports quality game, you need good viewership, an entertaining game to watch, as well as complete balance. So please let me know
know what you guys think would make a good esports edition. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of the Force Feed. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned tomorrow for another episode, keeping you up to date on all recent gaming news and announcements. Once again, this has been Force, and you've just been Force Fed.